everyone. Welcome to part two of our episode on Herzogen. After the outbreak of the Soviet-German war, Herzogen's bitterness became more difficult to control and she began to scold Li Min. Later, Li Min, who was in the nursery because of serious illness, was thrown into the morgue by the doctor. This drove Herzogen crazy and so the director put her into a mental health hospital for six years. In August 1947, with the help of Wang Jiasheng and his wife, Her Zijin, took Li Min and Mao Anqing back to northeast China, and the two children returned to live with Mao. Mao Xianying had returned to China in 1946. According to the descendants of leaders of family matters, Her Zijin had only two wishes at that time. First, not to be banned because she had been the first lady. Second, to be able to meet with Mao, say a few words and shake hands with him. In 1950, Herzogin accepted the arrangement by the government and left the northeast to settle in Shanghai. According to Kong Dongmei's recollection, when her mother heard Mao speak on the radio, she would faint from illness. Herzogin's second wish did not come true until 12 years later, when Mao secretly met Herzogin at Mount Lushan during the first Lushan conference in 1959. This was the only and last time the two met after 22 years apart. When Mao Zedong died in 1976, He was not allowed to go to Beijing, and in April 1984, died in Shanghai after a long and eventful life in loneliness. And then there is the family of this third lady, the article The Life of Her Zijin's Brother, He Minxue, written by Zhong Zhaoyun in issue number 3, 2011, of The Mainlands, Together in the Boat magazine, reveals what happened to members of Her Zijin's family during the Cultural Revolution. He Zijin's brother, He Minxue, led the Yongxin riots in his early years and then followed Yuan Wenzai and Wang Zuo to Jinggang Mountain. Later, he followed Mao to northern Sha'anxi. In August 1958, he was ordered to go south to Fujian as vice-governor, but not a member of the Standing Committee of the Provincial Party Committee. Since then, he had never left Fujian. Compared to those other contemporaries, He Minxue's official career was on the decline. He once said in an argument with He Zijin, I was implicated by you, and this implication reached its peak during the Cultural Revolution. After the outbreak of the Cultural Revolution, the Red Guards raided the home of Ye Fei, the first secretary of the Fujian Provincial Committee, and forcibly dragged him and his wife onto a truck and paraded them through Fuzhou wearing high hats. The Red Guards also approached He Minxue and asked him to expose Ye Fei's crimes. He Minxue refused. Soon Jiang Qing said, After liberation, He Minxue just relied on past achievements and did not do anything. Late one night in early February 1967, He Minxue was forcibly raided by Red Guards and then taken to the suburbs of Wufeng Mountain, a concentration of so-called capitalists and black whistlers. He Minxue was labelled as Ye Fei's black cadre, black chief of staff and triple rebel, and whenever the rebels sent Ye Fei outside for criticism, they dragged He Minxue to accompany them. He Minxue had been in prison for more than two months and still had not been released. His wife Li Liying was so anxious that she had to call her niece Li Min in Beijing. Li Min visited Mao, who said that He Minxue went to prison instead of Mao during the Fujian incident, but he did not intervene to protect him. Perhaps, in his view, family relationships are far less important than his political goals. Li Liying had no choice but to think of a way to take a letter written by Mao to Her Zijin directly to a great leader. The leader took a look at the letter and was astonished, and after reading it, was deeply impressed by the extraordinary relationship between Mao and Her. Soon after 83 days of imprisonment, He Minxue was released and sent home, but he had a disease and lost his official position. After the end of the Cultural Revolution, He Minxue became vice chairman of the Fujian Provincial Political Consultative Conference and a deputy to the National People's Congress before he passed away in 1988. While He Minxue was in prison, Jiang Qing sent people to investigate the He family, including his relatives in Shanghai and Jiangxi, to collect materials and persecute the relatives of the He family. He Minxue's older half-brother, He Minxuan, was labelled as a religious landlord in Yongxin, his hometown, and the couple were tortured and died in injustice. During the Cultural Revolution, Liu Ziyi, the adopted son of He Zijin's sister He Yi, 
who was the chief of security of the Shanghai Railway Bureau, was denounced for criticising Jiang Qing's misdeeds and was put into a sack and beaten to death in 1968. He Yi's son, He Lucheng, whose father was Mao's third brother Mao Zeqin, was also treated as a typical capitalism specialist during the Cultural Revolution and put on the blacklist of the May 16 elements and suffered from censorship and torture. He Minxue's son-in-law, Ye Qiguang, the youngest son of Ye Ting who worked as an engineer in Shanghai, was named by Zhang Chunqiao as a reactionary and was severely tortured. Even the brother of He Minxue's wife, Li Li Ying, was also persecuted. There is no doubt that Mao Zedong was the cause of He Zijin's and her family members' misfortunes. However, how many members of He's family and the Chinese people, including He Zijin, have recognised Mao's true face? That's all for this episode. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you next time.